Hello there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adini Kebabalala and in this video we're going to be looking at the IELTS writing task 2, specifically on, you know, writing your body paragraphs. I've seen different types of essays lately and I just see that people just want to try their best to answer the questions, but somehow there's no real direction to it. So I'm going to show you how to write your body paragraphs. And um, I'll be focusing on three to four types of sentences that each of your body paragraph should have. Before we go on, please subscribe to my channel if you have not done that already. If you're subscribed, then it means that you can always get notified when I have a new video. And you see that I try to be consistent. <laughs> so um, that's just something I'm begging you to do for me. So please subscribe now. And um, of course, don't forget to leave your comments as well. So, um, you know, I like to make it practical. I, I get tired of just talking without showing you things. So I'm going to show you how to do it. And this time around, we're using the Cambridge IELTS Book 15, Test 4. Okay, so if you have that, please look at page 96. Cambridge IELTS Book 15, Test 4. We're looking at Task 2. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, on page um, 96. So I'll read you the question very quickly. It says, in many countries, paying for things using mobile phone, in brackets, cell phone apps, mobile phone apps is becoming increasingly common. In many countries, paying for things using mobile phone apps is becoming increasingly common. Does this development have more advantages or more disadvantages? Okay, so the fact that you had advantages and advantages might make you want to think it's a, you know, an advantage or disadvantage question. No, it's not. This is an opinion essay. It's one of the eight types of opinion essays. Now, yeah, you say, I said eight types here. Yes. It means that the opinion essay can appear in eight different forms. If you want to know what the other seven forms are, please indicate it in the comment section and I'll put it there for you. Okay, so this is an opinion essay. Okay, and... Um, the question is basically saying in many countries, you know, in nations around the world, paying for things using mobile phone apps, that's making payments through your phone, okay, through software on your phone is becoming increasingly common. It's like rampant, okay, or that's the order of the day. Do you notice I'm paraphrasing the question? Yes, that's what I'm doing. Now they're asking you, um, does this have more good sides than bad sides? Are there more benefits? to this than drawbacks, okay? Do you think um, they are more good to this, you know, making payments via your phone than using physical cash, okay? What do you think, okay? I'm gonna pause for your opinion or for your, I want you to start thinking about it. Now, um, let's come up with our points and I'm doing this right here with you, we're doing it together. I don't have any points written down anywhere. I'm just gonna brainstorm just as you're doing right now. So let's think about it. Um, what makes payment via software easier than cash, okay? You know, I go into a store and I buy um, some drinks, you know, I get some fruits and everything, and instead of giving them cash, I use, I have a First Bank account, <laughs> this is Nigeria, so I use my First Bank app. I also have a GT Bank account, that's the Grand Trust Bank, so I use that app, okay? So instead of paying my 2,000 naira or something, I use you know, I transfer the money into the account of the store or, you know, the owner of the store or something. What makes that good? And what makes it bad? So, if you're thinking the same, I think um, the first thing is it is convenient, okay? I don't have to have cash in my wallet. I don't have to move around with money, okay? So, there's that first point of convenience, okay? That's number one. Another point can be the ease of, um, can be security, Okay, you know, if I had money on, and let's say I was going to a store where I was going to pay like 200,000 or some six figure or more, okay? Of course, I would be bothered about, okay, oops, somebody is not looking at me. Oops, somebody doesn't know I have money on and and everything. So the idea is, it is safe to actually pay, you know, with the apps, with the mobile phone app, because it means that very easily you can transfer the money to, you know, your seller, and then you're not afraid of, maybe robbery on the way or something like that, you know? So another point is safety, or we could call it security. Um, do you have a third point? <laughs> because I think the third one I have is a little bit, um, 
you know, I think, okay, so I'm thinking about this point, um, accessibility, okay? So it means that even if you don't plan to spend money, even if you didn't plan to spend money somewhere, okay, the fact that the money is in your account and you can use the mobile phone app, it means that you can easily make payments or you can, you know, let's talk about emergencies. I think that's what I'm trying to say, okay? So you have accessibility, okay? Accessibility, yes. Okay, so it means that you can attend to emergencies, emergency spending because you, you have the money in your bank account and you can use the mobile phone apps. So I think that those are three points and I think that we can work on them, you know, well enough to, in our paragraphs to form good points. Now, of course, you might have other points. You can actually write your points in the comment section. But what I want to do is not just come up with points. What I want to do is remember the questions that are there you know, more advantages than disadvantages. Well, you can decide that, you know, you have more of some or of one and then less of another. So we can decide to have two advantages and one disadvantage, okay? Because if you say that there are no disadvantages at all, it means that your point would only be, you know, advantages and, you know, we have three points of advantages already. But I want to bring in a disadvantage. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to have two advantages for this point and then one disadvantage. Remember, it's your opinion. So you can say that um, there are actually more advantages than you can agree that there are more advantages than disadvantages. And that, that way you just have two advantages and then one disadvantage. So what would our disadvantage be? Let's see. Um, let's see. I think it wouldn't really work in... Um, rural areas for example let's say you live in a village where you know the supermarket or the store or the shop you know the shop owner doesn't necessarily have maybe a bank account or cannot easily go to the bank or you know there are transportation issues becoming you know to the city and everything the idea is paying with your mobile app would not be you know possible it won't be too good because it's, it's, it's more or less isn't working so in that kind of situation you need your cash, physical cash to make your payment. So you can talk about um, limitation in rural areas. That can be our disadvantage. Okay, limitations. Let me put that down. So we're just going to pick the one we're going to talk about, limitation in rural areas. I told you I, I didn't come here prepared for this. I wanted to do it in front of you so that it would feel like it's engaging and, you know, we are like in a class, something like that. Okay. So we add three points, or altogether we have three points of advantages, one for disadvantage. We're actually dropping one um, advantage because, you know, all we need really, um, you know, are five paragraphs. Our introduction is, number, you know, is the first paragraph. Our conclusion is the final paragraph. We need just three body paragraphs in between. So two body paragraphs would be for advantage, while one would be for disadvantage. Now, the first point for advantage was convenient. Now. Our focus is to write a, um, you know, write on that point in your paragraph in a way that it is clear and reasonable. Now, when you want to write a body paragraph, three things are important. If you check the writing criteria, you know, the four of them, task achievement, then, well, this is task response because it's task two. Task response, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource and grammatical range and accuracy. You find that what examiners want for your response is for you to state your point, develop your point, and support your point. Those three things are crucial, okay? So what they want to see, when you're making your point, you need to state it, make it clear, make it obvious from the beginning. The next thing is you try to build it a little more. It's like laying the foundation and placing the house on top of it, okay? Now, when you have placed the house on top of it, you can now do your painting and everything. That painting is just for extra, well, beauty and aesthetics and the rest of it. But really, when you make your point, you build it. Now, when you have built it, you give an example to make it even clearer, you know, to make it relatable in that sense. So, someone, you can tell that you need three sentences mainly. Your topic sentence which is the sentence you use to state your point that's the first sentence the second sentence is your supporting sentence and that is the sentence you use to build your point that's your second sentence 
Your third sentence now is your illustration sentence. That's the sentence that contains your example. And then one sentence that is also important but is not always compulsory is the emphasis sentence. You use the emphasis sentence to more or less repeat or recap what you have said in everything to show the link between your example and the point that you've made. So it's just a case of, okay, you can have these four sentences to make your point. And this is quite compulsory or this is quite, um, it's significant, you know, in the opinion essay. Make your point, build it, give an example, emphasize it, okay? Just to tie it back to the beginning, to the topic sentence. So you can choose to add just three sentences or you even add the fourth one. And if you add the fourth one, the better for you because it means that um, your point will be clearer, it will be well established, well developed, and you know, you can meet your word count too <laughs> because that's also important. Okay, so let's try this out on our point. Remember that we add the points of convenience, security, and then, you know, those two points of advantages. And then the last point, is going to be a disadvantage which is the limitation in rural areas okay now let's take convenience how do you make that point a topic sentence remember that the question says paying for in many countries paying for things via mobile phone apps is becoming increasingly um common okay so when you've paraphrased in your introduction it's more like you have something like um making um you know making transactions using software or using yeah using mobile applications has become rampant in many countries or in many nations today yeah there is many so you don't want to use many you can say in um in several you know nations of the world or something like that or around the world or something like that okay so once you've done that in your introduction the idea now is to go to your body paragraph one to make your first point and of course you know that you should you would have summarized your points into the introduction okay you need to find a way to take that convenience and security, you know, into the introduction. The same thing with that limitation. Now, let's write our topic sentence for convenience. Okay, so your first point, you can write like this. To begin, okay, mobile transactions or mobile payments. Let's, let's just say mobile transactions are convenient. Okay, mobile transactions are convenient. Full stop. That's one. Okay, because the idea is you are going to build this up as you write. So you want to use a simple sentence to make your point as you start. Another, you know, another, because we are dealing with payments, right? Another way you can, you know, write this is payment for goods via mobile application. Payment for goods via mobile applications is convenient. Okay, is convenient. Did you get it? Payment for goods. So you have firstly, payment for goods via mobile applications is convenient. The idea is you're talking about convenience. Okay, you're talking about payment. We've paraphrased the words, but you also want to. Excuse me, you also want to start in a simple way, okay? So the first thing examiners want is to make your point clear and obvious from the get-go. And that's what your topic sentence is. To begin, it's either you say mobile transactions are convenient or you say the payment for um, goods via mobile applications is convenient. Full stop. That is your topic sentence, okay? Now we're going to the supporting sentence. And to write a supporting sentence, you need certain expressions. Now, what your supporting sentence is doing is it is giving life to your topic sentence. It is that sentence that tells us more, okay, about your topic sentence. And there are certain expressions that you can begin with. You can start with what this means is that, okay, or what I mean is and you go on or you say this means or this implies do you get it what this means is that what i mean what this implies or this implies that all of these expressions are meant to build up your response okay because 
you want to be clear, you want to sound like you know what you're saying, and you want to give the examiner, you know, ease of reading and getting your point. So to expand that now, we can say what this means is that when people pay for goods or for products using their mobile phones, they don't have to bother, they do not, please maintain that, they do not have to bother about moving with physical cash. Did you get it? When people pay for products and services using their mobile phones, they do not have to worry about moving with physical cash. That's what convenience means. For something to be convenient, it means that it is saving you the stress of doing another thing. So if you are paying with software, then it means you don't have to worry about moving with physical money, okay? Because the money is in your account and it's moving from your bank account to the bank account of the store owner or the supermarket or something like that. So the idea is that supporting sentence as giving life to your topic sentence, okay? I hope you're getting it. Now, the third sentence is our example sentence. Okay, example sentence. Excuse me, now let's go on. Now, how do you give an example? Some people want to tell you the last time I went to ShopRite, I used my phone to pay, the last time I visited, blah, blah. You don't want to talk about your exact experience. Now, I know that a question says should, you should give an example. Let me read that to you. It says, give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience. So yes, it means you should talk about something that happened to you. It doesn't have to be something that happened to you. You don't have to say, I went to the store with my mother to buy clothes and when we got there, we were told by the cashier that we did not have to use, you know, it's just going like that. The point is, examples don't have to sound like that. Your example can be something that happens in your world and it can be an abstract person that you use. It doesn't have to be you telling a story because the adult writing tax too is an academic kind of writing. So you don't want to sound like you're gisting while writing. You want to be formal, professional, and just sophisticated throughout your writing. So to give an example, you can say something like, for example, and you know you know you know the words you start with, for example, for instance, to be um as an illustration, to so illustrate and rest of them. Or take for example, so let's make an example now. So we have something like, um, for instance, when people visit um, ShopRite in Lagos, you can do that. When people visit ShopRite in Lagos, many, many of them or most of them pay for you know, the services and products using the mobile transfer service from their phones, you know, or on their phones, okay? I'm, I'm writing this in my head, so it's not very smooth, but let's do it again. When people visit ShopRite in Lagos, they, they make payments for goods and products using their mobile applications. And this means that they do not have to, you know, um, pay with actual money or actual Naira, because that is what is obtainable, or that's what is allowed in ShopRite. Now, even though that was a bit clumsy, I just wanted to give you a concept. Um, I think, please please check my description box. I'll provide you a proper paragraph for this point. I'm taking just convenience, okay? So I'm gonna provide a proper paragraph, you know, for this. So you can check my description box for it. I'm just, I'm doing this with you so that we're thinking together, we're processing together. I, I think I like to come to you fresh and and just, you know, the way they say tabula rasa, I like to come like that so that we can do it together. Now, your example is when they visit ShopRite, they make payments using their phone or using their bank applications because that is what, you know, that um, business demands or requires. That's how it works, okay? Because remember, the question is saying this is becoming increasingly common. That's why that's what you see around. And your example could even be that um, most businesses today run a cashless policy, okay? Or many countries you know, encourage a cashless policy. So you find that there's fewer cash in the economy or, you know, uh, moving around. And then most people just buy goods and pay via their phones. They don't have to move with money, okay? So feel free to give you an example, but just make sure it's not you telling a story of how you went somewhere and you were told something and all of that. Make sure it is as, um, it's as neutral as possible. 
Now, to give your emphasis sentence, if you're going to be working with it, you say something like, um, this therefore proves, okay? This therefore proves, or this, you know, this shows, or um, this implies, no, I think we, we already use that for the supporting sentence. I'm trying to remember the expression. There's, an, there's a particular expression you can use, okay? Ultimately, or in essence, exactly, that's what I need. Mean. In essence, okay? Mobile transactions or mobile payments for goods, you know, have become the common thing or, or have become popular because this is what many businesses require today or something like that. The idea is you just want to use a sentence that crowns everything, you know, based on what you've already said. The long and short of everything I'm trying to say is make your point, expand your point. Give an example to support your point and then emphasize your point in a final sentence. So you see, you can actually do the three sentences or you do the entire four. Um, you don't have to do the fourth sentence. That's the emphasis sentence in advantages and disadvantages, problems and solutions, um, discussion essays, and um, the last one. Um, I'm missing it. Uh, I can't remember now. Okay, but there are you know the four other types of essays. You don't need to do the fourth one. Yeah, the direct question essay. You just need three sentences for each of them because you're going to be putting two points in each paragraph for those ones, excluding the discussion essay. Um, so that's it. I hope that this helped you. Um, it was it was quite back and forth, yes, but I just wanted to show you how it works. It doesn't have to be you know all perfect. The idea is you are learning. So you know how it works. When you write your body paragraph, make sure you start with a topic sentence. Use a simple sentence. Don't complicate it. You don't have to say one reason that this, that, 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 that. Nah, don't be wordy. Try to be as straightforward as possible. And you know that examiners want to read and easily understand. And if your paragraph flows well, it means that it is cohesive, it is coherent, and um, you know your sentences are clear. And you know as well that for your supporting sentence, example sentence, and emphasis sentence, you're using complex sentences or compound sentences. So as much as possible, make sure you're constructing them correctly, um, you know, when you write. So <laughs> that's it for me today. It's quite hot here. It's, it's a very sunny day. But then I'm glad I could do this. And I hope that you have learned and you would, you know, try this out on your own. Once again, the, the test we did was... Um, Book 15, Cambridge Alice Book 15, Test 4, Task 2. You'll find it on page 96. Okay, so remember to check my description box for this paragraph. Make sure you try the other example, the um, other points. Yeah, the point about security and then the one about limitation in rural areas. So please try your hand on that as well. You find the link to takeiltest.net in my description box. And you would find the link to EnglishNiger.com if you need to take the mock test or you need to improve your English language. I wish you a great time. Do take care. Bye-bye.